Welcome back, new video. Right, so today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to do a Redis install, but it's not going to be just an app install Redis server on Ubuntu 1904. We are going to get the latest Ubuntu and we're going to be installing it from source. The reason why we're doing that is the latest Ubuntu, if built from source with one flag, enables TLS, which means you get a cryptic connection and you get certificates, security certificates. You can use them with Redis without having to use things like S-Tunnel. And that is what we're going to be looking at today. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, first thing, just make sure that we've got the latest information about the packages available. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a fill few build tools like C++, make all of that stuff so we can have Redis actually compile and it's just going to run through and install those things, not going to take that long. Um, so yeah, 23 is quick and then maybe give you guys a quick rundown is that we've got the install part, we've got some um, directories that Redis will use, we've got the security certificate stuff, some default configurations that I mostly got off of Ubuntu's um, default Redis install, some extra security configurations, and the system D script for it, and then just some extra commands at the end to make sure and test everything is working fine. So, back to the top, what we're going to do now is we are going to download the Redis tarball, we are going to extract it, get in there, get it to the directory, and then we are going to compile it and install it. And that's what it's going to do now. It's going to take a little bit. Okay, so I think I'm going to skip now. And we are back. We are back after the skip. So what's left to do now for this particular step is just to clean up. So if I, we've got the directory, we've got the tarballs, we don't need them anymore. So. We're going to clean up after ourselves. Uh, now what we're going to do next is we are going to create the users and the directories Redis will use. So, first things first, create the user, lock the user and then just make the, like the working directory for Redis. Set the permissions on it and now the PID default directory, create it, make sure we set the right permissions. And now for the config directory. So and now just for the environment variables, create a file for Redis. Maybe I should just make sure that I do a uh, Okay, now I don't think I need to do a churn on that file because I think it gets read in by root and then after it switch starts up Redis, it starts it as the Redis user. Okay, so let's skip that for now. And next step is to create the, the certificate. So we're going to make go back, make sure we are in the home folder, add a little config to the SSH because what happens if you run that, Without, if you try to create the certificates without this little line here, it complains that there's no file in the root home folder. So we just kind of want to go past that. So let's see. So next thing is create the store the IP address information and the DNS information of the server that we're busy using for in creating the certificates. We are going to now create the root CI key, the root CI certificates. So if you were to doing this for like for real in the production environment, you might want to make sure that the, these configurations are correct and reflect the um, information of your organization. But for now, for what we're doing is that just, I'm going to leave everything blank. So that done, step done. We are now going to get create the server key. So server key. And now for the CSR, so this is a certificate signing request. So this basically says that, hey, here are my details. 
for a certificate that I would like and you give that to a certificate authority or a company like Thought that creates certificates for you and what they do is that they come back with you with an actual certificate that you can use but for now what we have here is we've got just the request and we can double check our request information by running this command and we see for instance that we do have the subject or sedative names right there so we can see that the DNS and IP address are actually filled in and now what we do with the next step is we take this CSR over here and we pass it through to the root CA via this OpenSS command and then what it does it creates the certificate for us so and then we can double check our certificate and we can see that we still have the DNS and we still have the IP address and it's still filled in so we're kind of confident that it's working and then the next step is to create some extra security parameters um, Diffie Almond so and this is going to take a while so I'm going to run the command you're going to see it run on the screen and then I'm going to skip and then I'll come back once it's finished so and now we run it so see you guys in a bit bye bye okay and we are back so we've run our command and now what we're going to do is we are going to just move the files to Redis's config directory so you're going to move the the server certificate, the server key, and then just our Diffie Alman parameters. And then we're just going to copy our roots here as well. So this is for like for the client connection side of it to authenticate the clients. And then we've got just make sure we set the permissions for those files. And now we're going to go back to our root directory, make sure that we're still here and we're just going to clean up the CSR file and for the other three files, are, these are your CA files. So for instance, in, a, in an environment where you might want to reuse them to sign other certificates is that you might want to keep them around or go and store them in a safe place and make sure they're protected. Um, so in terms of like for this demo, we don't particularly need them, but like I said, like when you're actually doing this for real for yourself, Depending on what you want to do with these files, you might want to keep them around or might not, depends on you. Um, so for instance, one of the things that people do with the files is that they'll, you can set expiry dates on the certificates as well. Um, so for instance, you might want to make this, the expiry date for the CA very long and then the certificate to sign very short so that you can use the same CA to re-sign a bunch of different certificates into the future. But for now is that for the purposes of the demo we're not really going to reuse them but okay so maybe I'll just end up the okay sorry there we go bit of a typo so let's see and now they're gone so again we've made sure we cleaned up after ourselves okay so next step is to set all of the different configurations for Redis so it's in terms of like for script, I've kind of done it in this format so that it's kind of bash friendly. And so what I think, instead of trying to type out all of these individually, I'm just going to try and put them all in a script that we can run one time. So I'm just going to do something like call it install and then call it sh or shell and then just copy paste this stuff over. Okay, so. On top here, some defaults I grabbed from Ubuntu's installation of Redis and then some extra security um, settings. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to use bash, we're going to run this file and then we're just going to double check that the configurations that we expect to be in that Redis config file is there. And we're going to do that just by echoing out everything and everything looks fine to me. So, next step is to create the actual system service file and we're going to copy that let's see if we call, yeah cool so let's see so we're going to just put all of this and there and now we are going to start redis and see if it ran or it runs sorry there we go so let's see so and we can check whether redis runs with the status command 
And now we can also make sure that when the server restarts again, it restarts Redis as well. Okay, so everything up and running. Moment of truth. So let's see if we can connect via Redis to CLI. Come on, and it's going to ask for password, and the password is the one that we've got here with required password. And we're just going to copy paste that, and then we're going to see if we actually get connection. And it looks like we do, it didn't come back with an error. And just to make doubly sure what we're going to do is we're just going to set a test environment or test, and then we're going to go back and see if we can get it back. And Reddit says, yeah, you can get it back. Ping pong, and then if we do test, let's say first actually do keys to make sure that, yeah, we got that key there. And if we do uh, delete the key, and if we go back and say, give me all the keys again, it's gone. So we've got Redis, it's secured by TLS, it's encrypted, it's got certificates, it's got a password, it's got some extra security configurations parameters. And maybe just show you guys some of them and what they do is that. So there are some dangerous commands in Redis, like for instance, flash all DB, and what it does, it basically disables these. So it says that rename this command from what the Redis default is, do something that, that's null, that does not. And then for some of the other commands that you might want to keep around, it just kind of obfuscates them. So it says that this is the basic command for it. And then it just says, well, look, we're going to just rename it to something else so that if somebody were to be able to get onto this Redis server in some way or form, and they try to run one of these dangerous commands, as that they're not quite sure which ones to run because it looks a bit different, right? And that's kind of it, guys. Um, if you want to see more content, subscribe. If you've got any questions or you like the video or something, just have got some feedback, comment. Um, if you like the video, give it a like. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.